Hi, I'm Andy, and in this video we'll be exploring how to attack, detect, and defend against the abuse of Windows accessibility features. Windows comes with a selection of apps to help people with physical impairments use a computer easier. Maybe you've seen some of them hiding away in the start menu, like the on-screen keyboard, narrator, or screen magnifier. Or perhaps you stumbled across others by accident, like Sticky Keys, which is activated by pressing the Shift key five times in a row. And, crucially for the purpose of this discussion, they're also available from the Windows logon and log screens. Although there is one slight difference when launched via this last method. They run in the context of the highly privileged system user. The accessibility tools themselves reside in the Windows System32 folder, and Microsoft has put some access control protections in place to deter tampering. Even the administrator group only has read access, and the permissions can only be changed by the owner, trusted installer. But a local admin does have the ability to change the owner of a file back to themselves, and then upgrade their permissions to modify the file. Here I am renaming the original sticky keys file, setHC, to .back, and replacing it with a copy of the Windows command prompt. Now, hitting the shift key five times launches that command prompt instead of sticky keys. Running who am I shows that this is running in the context of my current user session. But doing the same from the lock screen confirms that this technique has allowed me to elevate my access from a local administrator account to full system privileges. It also acts as a method of persistence, allowing me to access the machine from the logon screen even if I lose access to the admin user account. For example, it might get disabled or the password changed. This technique also survives between reboots. So far we've been assuming physical access to a machine, but this technique can also be exploited over a network as the accessibility tools can also be launched via the remote desktop logon screen. It's relatively trivial to detect this technique. The most simple is to compare the file properties of the various accessibility tool executables with known good values. Or for a more robust option, compare file hashes. Although it's worth noting that there is another way to achieve this attack which doesn't involve changing any files on disk, making these detection steps ineffective. To find out how, check out my video on image file execution options. Everything we've done so far uses genuine Microsoft code. There is no malware for a simple antivirus scanner to detect. However, more comprehensive endpoint protection software should have no problem detecting and blocking this. For example, here we see an attempt to achieve this same attack on a machine running a recent version of Microsoft Defender is detected and blocked. However, as we're running as a local admin, we could just tell Defender to explicitly permit it. This can be tightened up in an enterprise environment via group policy by disabling local list merging. This forces Defender to ignore any configuration changes or exceptions which have been defined on the local machine and instead use the values set by group policy. After the updated policy has been applied, the exception we had before has been removed and an attempt to launch our modified sticky keys via the 5 shift keys method once again triggers an AV alert, which we can no longer add as an exception. Additional defences can be put in place around RDP by enforcing network logins. This requires a successful authentication before connecting the RDP session and automatically logs the user in. So the user is never presented with the opportunity to take advantage of this attack at the logon screen. Although this means this technique no longer functions as a method of persistence, if an attacker does still have working credentials, then they can still log in and use this technique to achieve privilege escalation to the system user. Finally, remember that we need local admin privileges to pull off this attack, so avoid granting them to normal user accounts if you can. Just be sure you don't leave open any other routes for those normal users to elevate their access to local admin, such as through path interception. Check out my video on that topic to find out more. But that about wraps up this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like and consider subscribing if you want more of this sort of content. Drop a note in the comments if there's anything you think I missed around attacking, detecting and defending against the abuse of Windows accessibility tools, 
or if you have a good idea of what topic I should cover next. I'll see you next time.